Hi everyone. Restriction fragment length polymorphism or RFLP is a technique invented by English scientist Alec Jeffries during his research into hereditary diseases in 1984. As suggested by its name, it's a technique to find out whether the two or more given sequences are monomorphic or polymorphic totally based on lengths of dna fragments generated by their restriction patterns which are unique for every restriction enzyme here obviously re type 2 like equo r1 sal1 bam h1 etc are used which recognize their unique sites and cut within them in a specific pattern also referred to as rflp analysis this technique takes advantage of polymorphisms in every individual's genome although maximum genetic makeup of individuals of any species is identical rflp analysis entirely depends on the variable number of tandem repeats or vntrs which are minor differences that impart unique looks and tendencies of various individuals in a population The steps of RFLP include cutting at a unique RE site using a specific set of restriction enzymes, then separating the DNA fragments based on their lengths by gel electrophoresis, and determining the number of fragments and relative sizes from the pattern of migration of the generated lengths of DNA in each case. The complete RFLP process requires DNA fragmentation, electrophoresis, probe hybridization washing and auto radiography the detected rflp is visualized using x-ray film in auto radiography some of the applications of rflp analysis include the first is dna fingerprinting forensic scientists may use rflp to identify suspects as actual criminals based on evidence samples collected at the crime spots After RFLP analysis, exactly matching running pattern of the crime scene sample and that of any of the suspects signifies that both DNA samples are identical or monomorphic. In other words, absence of polymorphism indicates total similarity. This is extremely useful in forensics simply because if polymorphism is missing between a suspect's DNA sample and the DNA recovered from the crime site then it is proved beyond any doubt that the suspect is certainly the culprit the body samples recovered from the crime site such as hair follicles blood cells from blood stains and seminal fluid etc are extremely critical and precious for DNA isolation as they are available strictly once since their amount is usually very scanty the first thing that's done in their amplification with a goal of acquiring the criminal dna sample in ample quantities very clear and black and white kind of outcomes are obtained when rflp analysis supports forensic cases ensuring fair verdict and complete justice to the victims the next uses that rflp is also used in the determination of paternity or for tracing ancestry in the family trees parenthood of a child lost in childhood may be established using multiple rflp analysis it is based on the principle that the rflp pattern of any child would resemble up to around 50% with each of his or her biological parents then genetic diversity evolution patterns genetic effects of migration diagnosis of certain diseases and effect on gene pools of various species by inbreeding versus outbreeding patterns can be also judged using rflp the genetic diversity studied using the tool of rflp analysis uh, brings results which are very reliable the technique of using rflp detection of variation in genomes is a vital tool in genome mapping and genetic disease analysis in all of these applications if the rflp gel patterns between the two samples are identical we can say that there is a 100% match or polymorphism is absent only in an authentic parent child pair 
the match would be around 50% instead of a 100% match for obvious reasons it's important to note that rflp technique though brings correct results it is rather tedious and slow due to many steps of which auto radiography takes the maximum time depending on the half life of the chosen radio isotope as the label hence it has now been replaced by more powerful and robust techniques namely rapd and aflp the technique called random amplified polymorphic dna or rapid arrived which was rated far better than rflp although it was derived from rflp itself by improvisation hence no dna sequence knowledge was required because no restriction of the dna samples by re's was needed just random decameric primers are selected and pcr of the two dna samples is attempted in a thermocycler there are only two possibilities the amplification would happen or would not happen then both the samples are electrophoresed and thick pcr bands called blobs in both the lanes of the electrophoresis gel are observed and mutually compared accordingly it can be figured out whether the ap- amplification pattern is identical or different absolutely no correlation indicates that these two individuals are different rapid is indeed rapid that is quickly yields the results since pcr bands are thick enough to be visible to the naked human eye hence auto radiography for visualization is no more needed rapd is inexpensive and more accurate too hence is a great substitute of rflp yet another even more powerful substitute of rflp to a- accomplish the same results in forensics is amplified fragment length polymorphisms or aflps this is a true combination of both rflp and rapd hence involves first cutting the two dna samples by a specific set and the same specific set of re's followed by the attempt to amplify them by pcr the name aflp is suggestive of this kind of procedure as it indicates amplification by pcr of the cut dna fragments this approach gets the advantage of obtaining short handleable fragments from rflp as well as the benefit of thick visible bands from rapd aflp indeed proves to be multiple times faster reliable and more accurate than both of them in decoding the match among two or more dna samples the aflp technique is based on the selective pcr amplification of restriction fragment from a re digest of genomic dna lastly now various genome projects have been taken up and executed which spell out the complete genomes an excellent thing for direct comparisons and hence undoubtedly ahead of all of these three techniques guys we hope that this simplified description was enlightening in understanding the immense role of molecular biology even in the success of the judiciary systems and imparting justice thank you for watching and appreciating our videos and encouraging us to deliver more stay blessed and learning see you in our next till then take care and bye